I've been looking forward to uh to visit the season field since it was established about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. And uh thank you very much for the video. And uh I've seen many things today. Exhausted right now. <laughs> but uh uh, so, so the thing I want to share with you, I mean, there's a lot of implementation development at this institute, uh, particularly related to the uh, electron spin resonance experiment, which uh, was a pioneer at uh, IBM, and now uh, further excited to the standard here at this uh, institute. Um, the thing I want to talk to you about is uh, some of you are working in this area. Uh, is to use uh, the fundamental principle of supervision, uh, into, incorporate that into the microscope, and then see whether one can improve the uh, performance of such a microscope. So the, the quantum uh, microscope uh, that I'm referring to, which is the results are basically summarized uh, in this uh, slide here, is that we combine uh, control terahertz uh, radiation and the, into the uh, scanning color microscope. And uh, some of you know that hydrogen is one of the impurities or background gases that's in the system. And uh, we accidentally saw this hydrogen molecule in the junction and it responds to the terahertz radiation. And it forms a qubit uh, in that there are two energy levels. Uh, as you can see, it'll be from the uh, structure of this hydrogen molecule in the junction. And uh, in the control uh, signal, uh, we see this population. That's all. So a lot of talk, you know, I would encourage you to ask questions. Okay? If, if I go along in the slides, if you don't understand anything or something, uh, then Speak up, yeah, speak up, and uh, it would be good if we have a discussion rather than me speaking all the time. Okay, so I'd like you to uh, just ask questions uh, when we are put to this uh, plan. Okay, so this is the thing I want to talk to you about, and uh, particularly since it's, this is relatively new, I will go through why we see these observations, at least our understanding of why. We can see a uh, super molecule uh, superposition and how we make it in you know, our data. If it's not responding to my command, it wants on the screen. Oh, okay. okay, now it works. You need a director. Maybe you tell us what to do, right? So that's yeah. okay. So there are basically two types of electron microscopes. Okay, one is the transmission electron microscope, which is uh based, is based on the uh wave property of the electron. And then the other is the scanning color microscope, which is also based on the electrons, but then it, it relies on the principle of uh, coloring. So this quantum microscope also uses the SDM, but it is based on the superposition principle of the qubit that we'll be using. Too. Okay, so we have the uh, uh, two different approaches. One is the uh, at least in, in, in my lab, is the, uh, uh, the, the low temperature uh, scanning tunnel microscope uh, around 600 millicalvin and nine tesla magnetic field. And uh, the main reason we go here is that one is you can study magnetic properties, and second, with lower temperature, you can increase the energy resolution, uh, especially by inelastic electron tunneling is very possible. The second approach is to use couple the SPM to light. Okay, so this has been a long interest uh, in this in my group. It's from the very beginning. Actually, the first paper that we published using SPM is back in 1990. 
eight, and it was using light. Uh, in this case, 325 nanometer CW light to dissociate, the photo dissociation of an oxygen molecule from silver moments or silver. And that was actually the first publication of my career in SDN. <laughs> so from the very beginning, we were always interested in uh, light coupling uh, uh, to SDN. But it took a long time to get to the coherence part. In fact, uh, Ying was also involved in the uh, light coupling to O2 on silver moments here. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Which are your experiments? Well, you know, you know, the cursor moving and then somewhere. <laughs> okay, so the second one is the uh, coupling of uh, laser light uh, into the uh, SDN. And in this case, we use Kelvin radiation. Okay, so the, 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 the result based on the terrorist radiation is very similar in a couple to the uh, inelastic electron tunneling spectroscopy. So in the inelastic electron tunneling spectroscopy, you have the IV curve, and then when the voltage crosses some excitation, this can be spin excitation or vibrational excitation or rotational excitation or photon emission, that there is a small kick increase in the uh, tunneling curve, IV curve. As you know, this is very small big change, so that we use the first harmonic signal, which gives you a step in the DIGB. And uh, we like to uh, sometimes this step is very small in particular for the vibrational excitation, it's pretty small. Uh, and uh, so we take the second harmonic signal, which is related to the second of the IV curve. So you get a deep. Okay, so this type of spectroscopy through this modulation. Okay, so in addition to the uh, PC voltage which you ran, you apply a AC modulation signal, which usually is a sinusoidal signal. So the uh, in the absence of the this uh, uh, oscillatory AC uh, voltage uh, signal. You have that the IV it just follows the PC voltage, IC voltage, V zero, VB. So VB is the bias, the PC bias. If you add an AC voltage, which is this oscillation of the uh, uh, bias between the tip of the sample, you have then V is equal to VB, which is the uh, PC voltage plus this oscillation. And uh, in terms of the ionized voltage, which have this this uh, this this uh, form here. Okay, so if you do then a Taylor series expansion where the oscillation amplitude is small compared to PC bias, uh, you get this formula here, the first few terms. So what you notice here in this Taylor series expansion is that the PC current has two values, two, two terms here, PC value, PC current has two values here. The one is the the familiar one, which is the the, the IV curve, right here. You have a bias uh, between the tip of the sample, you get a DC current, my current. Then this new thing pops up, which is a DC current related to the second derivative, V e squared IV e squared. And then this term is uh, related to the first harmonic signal, which is related to the IDV. And then the second harmonic signal is the second derivative, V e squared IV e squared. So this, this term here is what we call the rectification term. Once you have an AC voltage modulation, you will get a DC current if the junction is nonlinear. Okay. So if the if the IV curve is straight, you will not see a rectification current. If the IV curve is nonlinear, then when you impose an AC bias, you'll get a DC current. Okay, so in the terahertz induced experiment, you will get both terms if the terahertz radiation is absorbed 
by the molecule. When the Terra Earth is absorbed by the molecule, the molecule absorbs photons, its population changes okay, between the zero and one, for example, but between the two levels. Population changes. And when that population changes, the eye goes through the two levels are different. So you will get a signal from the population. You also get a signal from this term here because the terahertz is basically the voltage modulation. So when you have a voltage modulation, which is the uh, AC signal, AC modulation, you will get a rectification current. Okay, and that rectification current, you can see from this simple formula here, the magnitude is same as the IETS because the IETS you monitor the second harmonic signal, and that magnitude, as given by the Lockheed amplifier, is the same as the rectification term. So, a good approximation. Right? Okay, so that's uh, one thing about the terrorist radiation. Now, you can, you can see this similarity between terrorist and this rectification term and the ITS signal by just doing a CW terahertz radiation, uh, radiation going into the junction. So basically, the CW terahertz means that it's just an AC oscillation in the, in the fields, which turns into voltage between, because the, 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 the voltage relationship to the field is just field times the gap distance from it. And so you get an AC voltage modulator, but this modulation is in the terahertz because it's going to the terahertz. So from this type of experiment, this 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 uh, this um, CW terahertz is obtained by feeding to to lasers, CW lasers, and this peak is in the terahertz range, and that goes into a uh, this uh, solar conductor antenna, the PTA emitter, which emits terahertz radiation. And then through some lens system, you can focus into the junction, and you can do spectroscopy. What's what's it? Yeah. Oh, it's it's one type of laser. It's one some type of laser, uh, which I I just want my forgot what it stands for. Standard battery. Yeah, yeah. It has a tuning range, small tuning range, and. Um, and uh, so by, by, by choosing the, these, the difference between these two frequency, you get a terrorist speed. Okay. And just going to this uh, uh, this uh, PCA emitter, uh, which drives the electron between the electrodes, it emits terrorist radiation. And those those cable things? These are fiber optics. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, because everything is in the visible, near infrared. Yeah, not terrorists. Yeah. So once you get into the terrorists, then you, you uh, uh, have to purge the system because water absorbs the terrorists. Can I ask a question? Yes. So in this case, the lock in is locked to the terrorists? No, no. You, you don't get a lock in. I talked to the terrorists. Yeah. yeah. So we chop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We chop the, uh, the, 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 uh, the terrorists. Wait. Yeah, so the first, the, when we chop it, right, we basically measure the difference between laser on, laser off. Right? That's, yeah. the, that's the logic. That's, yeah, so so that gives you uh, current that's only induced by the terrorist radiation. Yeah. Yeah. So you subtract out the big background current. Yeah, so you can actually measure very small current. Yeah. And I'll see you, show you a spectrum. So this is a spectrum comparing. IPS and rectification spectrum. Okay, so, so we label here IR, this is rectification current, the direct rectification current, AC current. And you can see here, this is a scale picoamps, 0 0.006, 0 0.06, and 0 0.00. And the noise is in the order of pentamps. So this is for carbon monoxide absorbed on silver one one zero. So there's a CO molecule in the background, is silver one one zero. 
This is where the detection spectrum is uh, the CW pair of CN, and then uh, uh, chopping it uh, at uh, 300 hertz, say. And then the corresponding uh, IPS signal, which is modulating the same modulation and with uh, uh, three millivolt peak of modulation. So you can see that they are basically the same. Okay. And then this is for nipolosine, which is a nipple atom with uh, two cyclopentadienyl rings. So it isolates the magnetic moment. So the peak here is at four millivolts, which is the magnetic anisotropy of this molecule. And you can see that they are the same. And then the uh, this is for hydrogen dissolved on copper nitride. So this is copper nitride. And you can see again that they're basically the same. And this this dip here is because of the uh, uh, the difference in the frequency AC signal that we both get. It's one is in terahertz, the other this one here is in the uh, three hertz oscillation. Okay. And so the similarity between these is because if you look back here, that the rectification spectroscopy for the terahertz gives you this term. And then the IPS, it gives you, give you this term. So they are basically the same. If the terahertz is not absorbed, the technology doesn't absorb the terahertz. So in this case, the hydrogen, the CO does not absorb terahertz. The nicotine does not absorb terahertz. It's not matched because the frequency of terahertz is not matched to any of these absorption. And also in the H2, because the frequency is off, it's different than the uh, two level system. So there's no absorption of the terahertz. So when there's no absorption in the, of the terror, the only DC current that you measure is the rectification term. In case where this, there is absorption, that is now is with a uh, femtosecond for the terror. The normal then the previous image can become hydrogen. That's not, there's no, yeah. there's no block, there's no. Yeah, so this is hydrogen because this, this peak here is due to the rotational excitation of hydrogen. Yeah. It's J equals to one to J equals three. Yeah, it's a, it's a para hydrogen on the H2. But in the image you cannot really tell, I guess, it's a, you cannot tell. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically from the spectroscopy, ITS spectroscopy. When there is hydrogen, there's a very distinct spectrum depending on the coverage. So there's a rotational, in this case, it's saturation. So you get a pretty strong rotational uh, transition, J equals one to J equals three, about 42 millivolts. Yeah, it's very similar to the gas phase because this molecule is to uh, J equals zero, of course, it's not rotating. But when you excite the higher J, the molecule rotates like a rigid rotor, very similar to the gas phase. Yeah, but you don't see the other transition for, for terahydrogen. Uh, it's only the RJ that exists. Yeah, so you see the J1, J3 transition. That's, that's this one. The ground state is actually J1. Okay. okay, so in this case, uh, the previous case is using CW terahertz. It's, it's difficult to know exactly what the two level transition is for hydrogen. And so we cannot easily choose the terror radiation that matches the two level energy separation. Similar to ESR, right? So you have to choose the RF frequency to match the, 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 uh, the, the magnetic separation. So here it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah? So we do not see the resonance of the by terrors or see that in terrors because the molecule. Uh, the frequency uh, depends on the, the, the field. Uh, you can see, you'll see there, there's a, a, a nonlinear stop shift of the two level system. The hydrogen molecule in the gap has a small cycle moment. So it, it reacts to the substrate that's the field, 
very sensitivity. And then also to the compliance field, which is the bias between the check and the sample. Okay, so in this case, the uh, uh, CW, if you go to the uh, using the uh, femtosecond terahertz radiation, because it's a short pulse, there's a broad band of frequency in the terahertz. So you come in with a one terahertz broad band, hydrogen will absorb the terahertz. If, if it absorbs, you have, a, you, you have the frequency available for the hydrogen to absorb. So for the terahertz radiation, you can be in resonance. Uh, one of the frequency will be in resonance with the uh, energy separation. And I'll tell you what the symptoms are. Okay, so this is hydrogen on copper nitride. This is copper nitride. And you can see that the IPS spectrum is different than the regular PK spectrum. Now this is the hundred and second terahertz pulse. Whereas the Nicolosy is the same because Nicolosy in our case it does not absorb the, absorb the terahertz. And then the cobalt is basically the same, it's the combo resonance of the cobalt is about the same. And then the carbon monoxide also same function does not absorb. Okay, so it's, in all these cases, the hydrogen small field exhibit, uh, exhibit a difference between IPS and representation. This, this should be the, the, instead of IR, it should be the EC current. Because I told you that EC current has two contributions. The one is from the population difference due to the absorption, the other is representation current. Because we have an AC driving the junction. Okay, so the experiment have, you have then this terrible pulses coming in with the hydrogen in the gap, and then you measure the polymer, and you measure the repair <laughs> There was radiation induced polymer. The polymer that we measure is only from the terrorist radiation. Now, this is very interesting because the terrorist, the, 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 the field part of the terrorist, as you know, the, the yes, sorry. As you know, the light can be viewed as photon or field. Okay, so in this case, when you shine terabyte light into the junction, it behaves simultaneously as particle and wave. In the, the field aspect, the, the wave part gives rise to the wave return because it is due to the AC oscillation of the field and not the wave. The absorption of the uh, terahertz radiation uh, by the hydrogen molecule, that is due to the photon property of the light. Okay, so simultaneously, when terahertz goes into the junction, it behaves simultaneously as a wave and a particle. So I wrote down this is that in more generally, light can be viewed as a superposition of wave and particle properties of light. To me, uh, I just want to understand something um, that was just said, right? It's this is induced because the yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, it's too very different. But where it's induced by the terahertz. Yes, absolutely. I don't understand. Okay. Yeah. So in the uh, let me show you another example. Yeah. Here. Okay. So the terahertz is in this range. It has a wavelength about uh, 300 microns on three million wave. So our laser has a one gigahertz repetition rate. So take the night waves, for example. And then we modulate this at in the same 263 hertz. We modulate this. So this is basically you have little on, little off, little on, little off. And there are about a million pulses when the laser is on. So lock-in detector. So we lock into the uh, 263 first. And what that does is that it takes a current with the laser on, subtracting the laser on difference. Okay. So this then gives you the, uh, the current due entirely to the terahertz. Because it subtracts out the current into a normal problem. 
for me, there is some yeah, like we're sending two lasers that are right? and it's just the, the modulation that is there. It's no, that, that's the pump. Oh, I'm so far. Uh, so if you can go back to the yeah, okay. This one, no, okay. This is a big okay, but yeah. this is a third one. So we will not do any more CW experiments. In the other case, we are sending the data that's oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And I'll show you the bandwidth. So it's not just this. Yeah, no, no. This is just the CW. Okay. CW. Okay. Uh, I just want to show you here with the CW, you can uh, measure only the fuel or the light fuel. So this is the CW. This is basically the same as IPS when you multiply the gap with the AC bias. And in the IPS, you multiply about 300 hertz. Here, the waves is very fast. Uh, 10 to the 12 hertz per second. Uh, 10 to the 12 hertz. And uh, you can also, that's also, you can get a current. You can do IPS for that because it's a uh, just the AC modulation. Yeah. But I think what you were, what Stephen is asking is that yeah. you, you're, you're here looking at the envelope, right? That's the parameters, the envelope on the one. Because you're sending two lasers that are of a parameters, right? No, no. So then they mix them up and the beat in the beat. The beat is the envelope, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the beat is, the yeah, the beat is the, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a difference in those terms. Yeah, I think it's one of how this. Into some excitation because in, in the end, the photons we are sending they are different, they're, they're not the they're not the oh, it's yeah, but, but we, we send in uh, uh, this uh, this 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 these wavelengths are uh, blocked, it's not transmitting the junction. What's only transmitted the junction is terrible straight, yeah. The, the, the visible light near, near infrared is not going to the junction, it's blocked. Is blocked up uh, at the uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's blocked by even the uh, the, 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 the generation of the escape is blocked. Yeah, there's a filter. Okay, so yeah. in the end, we are sending only the only terrors, only terrors, yeah, sorry, okay, right. and that's due to the peaking humble. Yeah, so this is that big up only. Well, yeah. all, the other, all the experiment was just the pulse they did. Yeah. Okay. So you can forget now. Forget about this side. <laughs> okay. So the experiment then we only measure the terrors and use DC current because we are subtracting out the current that's with the without the photon from the current measured with the photon. So that's the population value. Okay, so this is the way to measure the electric field of the terrorists by the so called EO sampling. That's what our people are sampling. Okay. So you need to know what the, the terrorist um, field is. Like. And it is given by this. Thing. So it's functional delay. You have an intensity. So you have a pulse in that time domain. You do a Fourier transform and go to the frequency domain. And so that gives you the the bandwidth of the terabits for this setup. Okay. So it's basically it goes up to about two terabits, but this is a log scale. The log scale. So it peaks about 0.5 terabits, and practically it goes from about zero to one terabits is the radiation that we have in our system. It's zero to one terabits. Okay. So somewhere of uh, uh, hydrogen absorb. So this is very different than the CW case. CW, you have to pick a frequency, just like ESR. You have to pick a frequency, right? But if you have a pulse, you have all frequencies. And then wherever this hydrogen likes to absorb, it'll punch a hole in this spectrum. Okay. Okay, so this is the experimental setup uh, where we have a uh, startup with a one gigahertz. Uh, 
by sapphire at 28, 29 the supposed width is about 30 femtoseconds. And then we split into two beams, so the beams better, and then it comes out with the pair of pulses. And then we have a delay state, which can um, vary the, the separation in time between these two pulses. Okay, so the power is the delay. And so, so after going through this photoconductive antenna, terahertz radiation is produced. You have two laser pulses of terahertz radiation, and the time delay is the same as the time delay you have uh, when you set up this uh, uh, interferometer at, at 820 nanometers. And then you send these terahertz pulses into the SDM because terahertz is absorbed by the air. You have to then purge the path after the production of the terahertz. So the terahertz is produced here, and then it goes into the junction. Okay, so that's the experimental setup. The terahertz, of course, you cannot see, and so uh, the, uh, the the beam diameter of the terahertz is about two centimeters, pretty broad, a okay, pretty big beam okay, into the junction. Okay, so where is the two level for this uh, IHP model to come from? It's due to the different structure of this molecule. So the molecule can be in this state where it's closer to the surface or in this state where it's closer to the tip. Okay, so these are the two states. Okay, exactly, we cannot know, we don't know. But we see switching between two levels, just like switching in galaxy for magnetic system. So whenever you have switches, there's a barrier in between. Okay, so it likes to prefer one state or the other state. There's a barrier between those, which is very important for humans. And you need this barrier so that, especially for STM experiments. Um, and so if you have this barrier between, and then two wells, it's a double well of potential. So one of the problems you solve in quantum mechanics Whenever you have this double world potential, you have a ground state, which is symmetric, if you have equal wells. And then the other state is anti-symmetric. Okay, so these are the two levels we work with for hydrogen. So, so it's like a uh, company. Uh, okay. It's not much, right, right. Yeah, it's, it's not a thermal. thermal. No, no. It's, uh, there's a company. Uh, the, the coupling between these two levels, these two states, is a coming. Matrix on across this area. Okay, so these two states and the energy difference between these two is in the half pairs. So that's the one. Yeah, so okay. have you tried D2? No, no, that's you have D2 probably this is not gonna happen. Right, right. So the H2 comes to us free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the vacuum system. Okay, <laughs> it's free. Yeah. So to do two HD2, we have to put the gas in, which we haven't done. But that's something we have H2, D2, HD, yeah, which would be interesting to see. And it's usually what the plus and minus just to see plus and minus the Yeah, plus and minus, yeah. When you have a, a, a double world potential with the same symmetric double world potential, we solve the uh, showing the spread in correlation. Then the ground state is symmetric and the excited state is unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. So these are the two eigenstates. Yeah. So these are not these are not eigenstates. Yeah. Once yeah, A and B, it's not, that's not eigenstates. It's a linear combination of those two eigenstates. So those are the two eigenstates that define the qubit. So we must treat them when it's in like a single vibration. Uh no. No. There's, there's no spin in this study. Yeah, right. Yeah. One thing and then that one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing and that one. Yeah. And in this case, the separator uh, is depends on the well depth and so forth, but it's in the terahertz range. How do we know? From the experiment. That's in the terahertz range. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so when this, you have this terahertz box, right? So you have a band of frequencies. Okay, and this this hydrogen molecule can absorb the terahertz within this band. 
uh, less excitation from the ground state to the excited state, the three level system. And what that does is remove some particular part of the, this broad and previous. So whenever you have this, you have then this hole that's correct. It's a hole that's that that frequency corresponds to the separation between the two levels. So this is the frequency domain. Right? So frequency is to the hole. And then when you put your time form to the time domain because of the uh removal of this uh, particular frequency from this bar in, you get oscillators. Right? And the oscillation is, is weak. This is one sort of oscillation that we see. This oscillation is weak, but it, it is at a frequency corresponding to the energy difference between the two levels. Is that okay? It's one of the systems that not mention this. It's a schematic. There's a few. Yeah, compared to the end. The only experiment here is the black curve. Black curve. Okay, so so this is theoretical in that given this which monitors the experiment. Yeah, this well, again, yeah. if you punch out the frequency, you go to the Fourier transform, you'll expect to see oscillations. Okay, as a bunch of this is oscillation as much of delay between the two forces. Yeah, that's straightforward from the Fourier transform. Okay. Punch out the frequency in the, in the frequency domain, go to the time domain, you get oscillations. Okay. Those oscillations are the uh, oscillation frequency is the same as the frequency that the molecule absorbs the parents. Okay. okay, so this is the key slide which explains the origin of the result of this. So these are the two pulses. We have in this pump probe, we have two pulses, right? Right. When they are very far apart, there's no correlation these pulses. And so if there is no absorption, if there's no absorption of the terrorist radiation by H2, the only current you see, radiative taking current, would be when there is terrorist radiation. Right? So in the time domain, we have this pulse, terrorist pulse. And the only current that you can see is when there is radiation. This is when they are very far apart. This is the, uh, uh, the current that you see. That if there is no absorption. Once there is absorption, so there's no oscillation, right? You don't see any oscillation. Once there's absorption, when the two pulses are very far apart, when there's absorption the, in the time domain, you see these oscillations due to the rectification branch because they absorb, uh, you punch out the previous in your spectrum. So there are two sources of current when there's absorption. One is given by this yellow part, okay, which is the rectification current part. The field of the other is due to the absorption of the uh, of the light by the molecule. So when there is absorption, what you do is that you change the population in the two levels. Okay, when when there is an absorption, you change the population of two levels, and the conductance through the two levels are different. Okay, so when the conductance is different, you change the population. Then there's going to be a current that you observe, observe due to the, you know, the difference between laser on and laser on. Okay. So this is the decay of the excited state. So when the molecule absorbs, it promotes somehow, uh, some of the, it promotes to the excited state. And that excited state is going to decay. Okay. This decay, is reflected in the DC current that you measure because the conductance through these two states are different. Okay, some of the electrons go to the excited state, some go to the ground state. If there is population in the excited state, then you get a current that's different than when there is no nothing in the excited state. And this is going to have an uh, explanation of the case. That's the purple. Now, this is when 
the two forces are very far apart. So when the two forces are close to each other, like in this case, this function of the tau, and with hydrogen absorbing, then you'll see oscillations due to the uh, overlap correlation. And so, so what happens is that the, the in, in this experiment, what you measure is that when the two forces are, are sufficiently close, when they have effect on each other, then you can see uh, uh, some oscillations which is proportional to looks like omega times time. Okay. And the experiment then have this one here this point. And then you chop at 263, take the difference between these two. So you're basically looking at the uh, PC current due to the effect of the two pulses and due to the effect that terabytes is Right, so the one what uh, another way to see this is that the first pulse creates a superposition between these two states. First pulse because it has enough bandwidth to cover the energy difference between the two. So it excites the hydrogen molecule, it creates a superposition of these two states. Basically, in the, another way of looking at this is that. You have a uh, on the block sphere, you rotate the uh, the vector. Uh, every point, the the, the little pulse is equivalent to rotating the vector on the block sphere. Okay, so that basically when you rotate the vector, say everything's pointing uh, in the ground state, the first pulse creates a superposition of the two to 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 state, and that is equivalent to rotating the uh, vector. In the box, so you rotate by some angle, and then the system really evolves, right? Because there's no light, it stays coherent, right? even the, before the second pulse comes. So, okay, what do we know is superposition? Maybe you just decided to calculate excited state. Uh, oh, if you go to excited state, you know, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. you go to excited state, then you know. It will be your coherent. It will but come down to the ground state. In, and in the ESR experiment, you, you can control the, the duration of the pulse, uh, right? Yeah. To, to control the, the angle of this problem uh, uh, figures. But in theory, I'm not sure how can you create uh, exactly the superposition state by changing the pulse duration? Yeah, because it's more by the photon the size from the ground state. It's safe from the ground state first. Yeah, even if you have a reason. Citation, you still need some time to rotate, right? The rotation is instantaneous. Do the pulse. Do the first. Do the pulse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, take the other. I mean, in the in the ESR is also yes. Yeah. yeah. But then it's short. It's short. It's short. It's short. Your reach is important to. Yeah, yeah. It's short. It's short. It's short compared to the lifetime period. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's still short. You have the short post. So you have to apply short post compared to the uh, G2 times or the basic times, even the qubits that you have to in, in the case you guys got here, you have the, the post it has to be short compared to the G2 time. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Rabi oscillation in order to work with the CW radiation. That's the case. Yeah, so the first pulse creates a superposition in the ground excited state. And then it, it really evolves. To, then we can describe that by a phase factor here. And then the second pulse uh, basically pulls the population either the ground state. How much is the ground state pulls the excited state? Yeah, that would be super thing. Yeah, so the difference between GSR and NEAT is that the GSR is the exciting ground oscillation, which the frequency will depend on the driving frequency. Yeah, instead here is required the political, yeah. and the frequency of this vision is just given by the speed of the end. Right, yeah, but in the in this case, we have an envelope of energy frequency, and somewhere in there matches the H2 yeah, two yeah. levels. Yeah, so so in the pulse case, we don't have to 
tune the things like you guys do. Yeah, you just but keep it like even yeah within this family. Yeah. 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 So somewhere in this family, I can do absorption. Yeah, this is the, the usual components kind of the gas space in the case. Yeah. So so this you rely on the short poles or the short band frequency short band which matches your resonance. Two levels. Yeah, so that's why it evolves as an energy. This room is I can I can switch energy. That's the key too. Yeah, because when you create a total position, uh this vector then start to go into the sphere. Okay. Yeah, and the second was re rotate the, the, the vector. And then eventually go close down to the ground state because it's the light time, the basic time is short compared to when the next fall starts. So everything goes down to the ground state. And then you repeat the process. Okay, so this shows the two contributions. One is equal to the fuel. Yes. Okay. Yes. The vibrational energy is about 20 minimal. Yeah, it's much higher. Yeah, much higher than the than these two level. Two level energy is 0.5 minimal. 0.5 minimal. So the 0.5 there, which is two minimal. I'm sorry, for the five characters, which is too minimal. Yeah, it, that's the scale of the ground state and size of so too minimal. <laughs> it's not P1, yeah, we don't measure P1, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's the how the oscillation in case. Yeah. Okay. This is how this coherence is the species. Okay, so these are the two contributions. One is due to the field, which has a strong over when the two pulses overlap, it's a peak. And the other is the what we call the dynamic current, which is due to the population change. And so there are two contributions to the DC current. Both give oscillations. Because the first pure dependent one, you punch out the particular frequency. So you get oscillations at the energy difference between the two levels. And second is due to the there's a DC current going in the junction. And the terahertz induces a population change. So you get a change in the DC current. Okay. Just due to the electric current going through these two states. The two state population are changed by the terahertz. Therefore, you're going to get a uh, 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 current, and that's going to oscillate in time. Okay, so this is one of the data you can see here. Now, this is the uh, upper night by surface, and we put the chip right on here. And then we measure it's going to be a delay from minus 320 picoseconds to 320 picoseconds. And then you see this current. And if you zoom in the first 50 people seconds, you can see the more clearly the oscillation. And if you do a Fourier transform of this, you get the uh, peak here at 0 0.444 terahertz, and you measure a T2 decay of 100 people seconds. So from the width of the Fourier transform peak, uh, which is like 4.3 gigahertz, and so we can conclude that energy resolution if the uh, peak, the frequency shifts, uh, we can resolve to 17.8 micro EV. So the experiment is done at 7.5 uh, and but we can get uh, oscillation of uh, energy resolution pretty high. The Q factor of this 
uh, from the width and the frequency is about one hundred. So on the carbon nitride surface, uh, you can position the tip at different positions, given here one, two, three positions. So you can see that the uh, oscillations are very different. Okay. And then if you do the Fourier transform, you see these three different frequencies and they are pretty far apart. There are more than one frequency and that causes the peak because there are uh, um, out, uh, that the excited state is not a simple one state. The hydrogen can have slightly different orientation. So they have multiple two level systems, but close to the energy. So that gives us the key. So from these, uh, the, uh, these uh, heat frequencies will be sensitive to the charge on the surface, it will be sensitive to the electric field uh, of the surface. Due to the spot shift, because this hydrogen molecule has a slight backward moment. So the, there's an electric field which is from the underlying substrate because the copper and nitrogen have different charge. And so there's going to be a substrate electric field distribution. There's going to be also a field due to the bias. So you can tune these two levels with the bias. The bias sets up a, uh, uh, a voltage difference. And and that corresponds to the electric field, and uh, you can then calculate the stop shift from the these voltages. From IPS or mm -hmm. rectification, uh, the without uh, rectification spectrum, there is not much difference between position one, two, and three. Okay, so these are the IPS spectrum, and then these are the rectification spectrum, and uh, you cannot tell the difference. And you can see that due to the absorption of the uh, light by the H2, the IPS signal spectrum is different than the, uh, than the uh, it, this should be the DC current instead of the rectification current. And so this spectrum is different because hydrogen is so both. Sorry, sorry, I, I refer, sorry, I, I was mistaken. This is zero to two uh, gain. Which uh, vibration so mode do you mean? Yeah, so, uh, so zero to one is the back. Okay, yeah, the back. Yeah, remember where there are people who are in this room, it's a big amount of energy. work at the microphone, does work. Yeah, should I get this one off? It's being recorded on Zoom, it's just not loud in the stream because we're getting it now. So please do wait for the microphone to release the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Right. Okay, so this position is that if you go on the carbon nitride, you know, there is a, a different uh, surface charge on the surface due to this small item. So if you take the uh, this uh, uh, delay scans uh, at these different A positions, you see that uh, there's, there's difference uh, about the uh, uh, So these are the data. How come I display twice? <laughs> no, this is to show that the thing, the collector on top of data. <laughs> Confused a little bit. All right, so you can see that you can, you can, you can actually understand the spectrum. And so if you go to the frequency domain, you can see how the uh, heat uh, shift goes from about 0 0.3 to uh, uh, terahertz all the way to like 0 0.45 kilometers. You can also measure the uh, uh, T2 uh, at these different positions, and it ranges from 100 picosecond to down to about 30 uh, picoseconds. Okay, so that's the T2 uh, time. Okay, the, the, the spatial sensitivity is, is quite uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, here we take a uh, uh, 63 uh, delay scans yeah, at the 63 points. And uh, this distance here is uh, 619 angstroms. So from point to point, the spacing is 0 0.11 angstrom. So over this range here, the frequency change is 150 gigahertz per angstrom. So 
So we have a frequency resolution for four gigahertz, and the cavity again has a Q of 100. So you can sense a change in this oscillation frequency with about 0 0.2 ounce of uh, change. So the electric field or the charge on the surface is varying from point to point, 0 0.2 ounce. You can resolve the uh, effect of this difference in the field uh, from the frequency of oscillation. So here is a, a, a graph of, uh, you know, with 63 spectrums and the cost is the delay scan uh, with the amplitude uh, encoded in this palette. You can then go to the frequency domain. You can see how the cost is 63 points, how the frequency changes. Okay, there's symmetry, obviously, because you're going from 1 to 63 across this, uh, uh, this point, this height. I, I sort of okay, so if you go through another uh, direction, you see that they uh, change differently, and that's what you see in the frequency position versus frequency. Okay, so you can actually uh, uh, fix the delay and then uh, measure the uh, amplitude of your signal. So this is fixed at 1.5 and then 2.25 and so forth. You can see that the signal varies first from point to point, and second, they vary at a different rate. So what that means is that at each point, the oscillation frequency is different, so that you uh, they have all these uh, uh, differences in the uh, in the uh, signal strength at this different points. So I can play a movie here, which then uh, Shows you, you know, how the different parts of the surface, how this coherence, how this oscillation varies across the, uh, in this case, I think 128 by 128 pixels. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, this is a whole island. Uh, this is the coherence over here. You can sort of see a wave that goes through this whole island. And then the different parts exhibit different uh, uh, strength because at each point the oscillation frequency is different. Yeah. So what you actually sense here is a sorry. What you sense here is a, is a change of the well depth of the hydrogen molecule on the surface. Is that yes. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, what we sense here is the change is related to that. It's change in the spacing between those levels. Sure, yeah. that will influence the potential of the yeah. Yeah. yeah, because the electric field is interacting with the size of the hydrogen. Right, so my question is, I think, so how well is this, this double well potential character right, actually work? Do we know the binding energy of hydrogen energy on the surface? It is also about 25K. So, yeah, so we. We, the, the thing we know is the energy difference between these two levels. That's okay. what we made the directly. And well, then we know that it's a double well potential, but it's not super well characterized. Because we can see two levels in our high current versus time. You can see that it's switching between the two levels. Right. So there seems to be two states. Okay. Thanks. It's a more general question, but so we can do this in principle with a two level system or system that is sure and two level like state noise inside. But I guess there will be a requirement of the transition matrix element. Yeah. yeah, so that you use to model the results, right? So you can set up, which I'm not showing you, but you can set up one uh and then uh, in it, there will be a four diagonal terms and those the tonic terms. So there'll be a parameter that couples the two states. Which I guess for hydrogen is quite clever. It's in the very well, very well connected state. Yeah, yeah, because but there's still a barrier. Yeah, so it stays, you know, whenever you see switching in the I versus T, you can model it with double barriers, double well potential. Because it stays there, it stays at low current state for some time because it's a well. And then you can all go through the barrier by tunnel. To the other position of the world, other way. 
So that you know, you, you see the current stay there. Here's the second, second stay there, and then it goes to the judge. So it switches from both the time. So whenever you see it switching, you can model it to the two level systems. You know, many of your data is like that. So. Okay, so we zoom in, you can see more clearly what the waves do. So this is taking a fixed delay, and then you see the signal, the signal 128 by 128 pixels. You can make a, a visual view or a movie of how the thing changes. And then uh, uh, let me show you the next one, which is a, a, a more bigger uh, uh, picture. Uh, so you have a unit cell. And then you can see these different parts uh, of different points. They also have different frequencies because the charge is different at different positions. So if the charge is different, then the electric field is different. So this effect with field gives a nonlinear uh, soft shape to the energy level. What's the measurement time for this movie? Yeah, so each frame uh, takes about 15 minutes. So, 128 by 128. So, the whole movie took about three days. <laughs> it's a very, I think, the shortest movie there. <laughs> 28, 21 people seconds. And, uh, it's like, you know, it's like going to a if you watch a cartoon, and actually, there's a guy who draws up every frame. Like, so, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, how difficult does it actually control the hydrogen go? Yeah, I think this yeah. is. Yeah, the hydrogen is mapping. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it follows way over the tip goes. So, it's not difficult to control it? So, you, once you pick it up, it stays here? Right? You don't even need to pick it up. Yeah, it just gets trapped in there. <clears throat> yeah, and you don't see it. <laughs> we don't actually cannot in it. Yeah, but it, it uh, goes in the tip. It can actually go over a molecule. You have a lot of molecules outside, for example. It actually gets on top. Yeah, it just gets trapped in that cavity. And that's why you can use the new image. Yeah, so, so every pixel, we measure the Current, which is the you know how much uh uh coherent uh, signal it is, and then at each point from two up up from this area you will see a change in the frequency, and so that this is a movie that shows you that different points at different frequencies they have the symmetry of the subject. Okay, so I I I say it's a nonlinear star shift because if you plot the frequency versus the bias, you see that it varies like a parabola. It's been actually proportional to wave, so it's a nonlinear star shift instead of a proportional to the electric field. So you can use voltage to control the two level set right? then you can use the voltage to to control the coherence time. Which is given here T two versus the bias, and uh, this is also showing you the tip of the this accurate tip uh, with the problem on the comment uh, to the frequency, and you can see that it fits pretty well. Yeah, let me let me another thing that uh, is that uh, they are neighboring hydrogen molecules. Okay, so there is going to be interaction between the one that you are looking at. With the surrounding hydrogen. Okay, so here is the system, a cartoon of the chip looking at this molecule, and then there's interaction between these two, and uh, we can model it with the coupling constant G, and then uh, uh, because the data shows a uh, avoided crossing, uh, where if you have two two level systems, uh, you can have interaction between the two, and then it's going to have a uh, uh, Gap evolves when the two curves cross. Okay, and this this uh, coupling the, the gap 
depends on how strongly the two are interacting. Okay. And this you can control by uh, controlling the uh, current or the gap, or STM gap. So if the interaction is small, you see that uh, the solid curves are the uh, modeling and the, uh, uh, the, the blue part of the data. And so if you go closer, you can see that this gap broadens. And then if you go to 60 even closer, you see that the, big, the gap is bigger. Okay, so you can model this uh, with a uh, uh, G coupling between the two and separate it to something called G1 or G2 or G for particular G parallel. Um, and uh, you can model uh, how they behave. So let me show you the next one, which is the, uh, uh, both the, uh, this, this is a volume crossing when the two curves uh, intersect. And then there's a uh, overall, there's uh, uh, these, uh, the two parabolas. One is inverted and then the other is the regular parabola. And that uh, you can model, uh, this, the result is seen here and the different colors correspond to the, uh, the purity of these states. Okay, so you have, uh, when there's a large electric field, these two are separated, they remain separate. Okay, so when they are in the crossing area, uh, the state is a mix between the A and these two pubic states. So you see this avoided crossing and the colors are the amount of uh, a wave function in, uh, in A, either A or B. And this is the overall over a larger uh, electric field range. Surface, 
then you see this kind of oscillation when it's close to a feedback, uh, then see the oscillations. So this is a more complicated. Uh, so this is the set of uh, uh, event scans on the foot surface, uh, you know, without impurity across 10 points, see how they vary. And then if you go close to the defect uh, at eight positions across, uh, given these, uh, as the tip approaches the defect, you see that they vary quite a bit. So, so this technique is sensitive to defect uh, because every surface has defect, so when the pipe is how they track the time, you get a the defect. So this uh, technique uh, is given the uh, same here, the oscillations, the uh, TQ times, uh, the coherence times, the oscillation frequencies are different as you go near the defect. Okay, I'll go quickly. Another type of experiment we can do, uh, this is now away from terahertz, just the 800 nanometers. And then you can do the delay with two pulses of 800 nanometers and do a time delay. Okay, this is a different system. This is a purity molecule, uh, which uh, undergoes a structural conformational change. Okay, this can be again a cubic because the purity exhibit these two levels uh, corresponding to uh, standing up, and then you can go to a sort of lying down. You can see the current change. It's uh, very difficult. Two level switching that you see uh, between, in this case, structural change, conformational change of these molecules. So, this is a double well. Again, if you have two levels, two, two conformations, then to go from one to the other, because you see this switching between two states, then there's an energy barrier, then there will be two levels in here. And whenever you have Double well, you can have a wrong state in the first exercise. So the delay scan uh, shows a little bit noisy because of the way that we did the experiment, that we what we just count the switching. How many switching time per second or per minute? There's a function of delay between two points. Okay, so if the laser can drive the combination of change, then you can measure the transition rate that is switching rate. As a function of delay. Okay. So this is the transition rate cycles per minute as a function of delay, and that shows oscillations. Okay, but if you do a uh, bit, you can see the bit, and then do a Fourier transform, it's at 6.9 terahertz. Okay, so this is a different mechanism where the light actually undergoes. Uh, a uh, Rama scatter that will have a excitation. Okay. And, uh, and then it tries to uh, excitation creates a superposition between these two levels, and those are due to the confirmation of this chair for the kind of confirmation. So this one has for nine errors. And then if you, uh, uh, you know, you can look at timers, how the uh, other molecule affects the uh, dynamics of the other molecule. And if you see that the, the oscillations are weak uh, using this type of measurement technique. And uh, if you do a Fourier transform, you see that the timer, uh, the two level system is 6.0 terahertz instead of 6 of match. Okay, so another molecule, next slide, uh, the, uh, next to each other, two molecules next to each other. It'll affect the two level space. And it's pretty obvious because it'll affect the potential energy well uh, of, uh, of the molecule. So in this case, you have uh, 6.0 terahertz or uh, 24.8 millivolts. And the coherence time, the coherence time is pretty fast, you know, 0 0.9 picoseconds, <laughs> and then it's uh, 1.3 picosecond for this. And so these are very molecule it's all on top of one zero zero surface and have um, these very short um, uh, decoherence times. Okay, so so what I want to leave with you then is that uh, uh, this is a, a, a microscope that uh, whose uh, signal comes from the superposition of the two state. Uh, 
uh, in the stubble well, and then you can watch the uh, Ramsey oscillation uh, between the two, and that goes up in the oscillation of the DC current that we measure uh, in this microscope. And this oscillation frequency is sensitive to the electric field established by the charge distribution of the sample you're looking at, and also uh, to the DC field uh, that is applied to the tip of the sample. So both these fields will affect the energy spacing between two, the, the, these two levels due to the nonlinear stop shoes. Okay, so this is the group that uh, uh, have been involved with one aspect of another of this experiment. Okay, thank you very much. for the wonderful talk and also thank you for so many questions during the talk. Maybe we ask the, the online audience to type in your questions or raise your hand and uh, and then uh, you'll get your turn. Um, let's see, what about students? Where do you She doesn't come to the box anymore because oh, there she is back here. Don't do what's your question? <laughs> he promised that he would ask a question every talk. So, oh, <laughs> you're on. The author of the let's we'll give you a chance. But so, Neil, go ahead. It was thanks. It was great, great talk. Many thanks. I had one question about these two states. I think you mentioned you think um, one is more, the hydrogen molecule is more absorbed to the surface and one is more to the tip. There's also been a similar effect in a paper from Katharina Frank and Nacho Pascal with AFM on H2 molecules showing these two states. And yeah, my question is basically how sure are you and do you have some experimental evidence for these explanations with the two adsorption sites? Yeah, yeah. So we don't have direct evidence of the uh, of the nature of these two states. Uh, so I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah. So so what we are sure of is that there are two states, but the nature of these two states is not clear. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Ask a question. Go ahead. Um, you showed a nice graph of the um, Stark shift being sort of parabolic. And I wonder if that moves around for different tips, kind of like um, Kelvin probe microscopy. Yes, it does. Yeah. So different tips, uh, you know, have different uh, fuel, uh, uh, electric fuel configuration. So it does shift. Yeah. But it's, it's actually different. These parabolas are different. I think for the given tip, for the same tip, uh, these parabolas are different at different positions of, on the surface. So thank, thank you, Chris. I mean, it's fantastic. We have one question from you, one from the United States, <laughs> and another one from, from Seoul. <laughs> Like CO or some other molecules other than hydrogen. Oh, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, yeah. So CO does not absorb errors, so it's not going to work. Yeah. Everything is not sensitive to errors, but sensitive to infrared light, it has the nanometers. And you can pick up everything on the tip. And then you can use it as a center, but this time we have to use the inhand analysis and you can measure the rectification part, or in this case, you just watch the switching curve. Yeah. yeah, so that uh, is also uh, yeah, so so the, depends on you know, CO doesn't work. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
So normally there is no difference between the, uh, right. the, uh, the second derivative and the rectification period. Right. But the position was not exactly the same. Ah, that's human error. That's human error. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> because afterwards, in, for the Terra, it's interesting to be more perfect. And I just wonder why I see that you have this human error. That's what they did in the error. No physics. Yeah. No physics. Okay. Is there any difference? In the electric process, is there a difference between the negative delay and positive delay? I'm sorry, you get it, but uh, like in the in the graph, like the thing is. Which one? So, is there a difference between positive and negative delay time? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, there's. That is there should not, because we use equal force energy. Equal in density for the two forces. There should not be. Also not be. Yeah, any difference between the non-equal density of the two forces or between the split between the two beams? Whether the one force comes before the other or the other. So if they are equal in density, they should not be. All the time we don't see anything. But the reason why we scan all is to verify that. One is to verify that there's not there's little difference. The second is that well, the wider the scan can have the fluid type of error, we define the frequency error. Okay, I think one more. That's one short question. <laughs> uh, so 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 uh so you're mentioning about the, the, the quantum sensor, right? Yes. So electric field sensor. Yes. So is any um what is the sensitivity of the electric field? Sensitivity so to the electric field. Uh, I can tell you that we can make a difference when you move by 0.2 arms. But uh, can you be more quantitative estimation? What is the what you have on the magnitude? Is yeah. The yes. Because for sensor, yeah. actually, you, you want to get some value. Uh, right. Yeah. So from the star shift, amount of frequency change, you can back calculate the electric field. It's possible, right? Yes, it should be. Yeah, because the frequency come, change comes from the E squared. I mean, there's a, you know. Yeah, because I'm curious about yeah. the disk technique and what compared with other yeah. electric field yeah. sensor. But if I give you a value, that doesn't make it. Any sense? <laughs> <laughs> if I give you a number, is there a physical intuition for that? Maybe, yeah. yeah. 
but you can also you know backtrack and then from the data calculate the uh, from the Poisson equation the chart actual chart yeah that's it then I can compare to uh EFT calculations yes. yeah which uh uh it should work out Okay, I think that's a good time to thank Wilson for this wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.